Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Safety Sense and More. Paul Nee here, Safety Director with Alliance Partition Systems. So today we're going to cover fall protection equipment. We're going to look at inspection, storage, uh, fall protection training, uh, how your fall protection plan, which we covered in, in another video already, how that pertains to you on every specific job site, and uh, when is fall protection or fall restraint required. So the first thing we're going to go over is inspection of your equipment. Inspection is the number key, number one key element to making sure your equipment is up to snuff and is going to work for you. So what we did is brought out a couple examples of broken equipment. For instance, we have one of the nanolocks that we use all the time out here. These have 11 foot leashes. As you can see, it's been red tagged. It says broken strap and it does have a broken strap. This unit is junk. It's garbage. I'm going to save it for demonstrations and fall protection classes, but other than that, it's not worth anything to us anymore. Here's a unit. It looks perfectly fine. It's a 20-footer. It's red tag, and, and, and this is very key, guys. When you do red tag something, tell us on the red tag why it's returned and what's wrong with it. This one says it won't retract. You see how slow that is? It should go back faster. It still works. It still catches in two feet, but when you pull it way out, see it doesn't want to go back in very much. See how it's hanging up? So this unit is faulty. You bring this into the shop, we can send this back to the manufacturer or to a, a certified place to fix it if it's worth fixing it. So, you know, it's a cost plus thing. You know, they're going to charge us. This unit here costs about $300. So we take that into account. Do we fix it or not? Another item here, and this from near as I can tell came from a storage issue, was this horizontal lifeline. Jeff and I looked it over. Something hot got put on this rope. We can find singe in, in places that are hard like it was melted. This horizontal lifeline is a hundred footer. I think we own either four or six of these things. But this unit costs, just so you know, a little over $600. We know what job site it was on. We know it came back messed up. Um, there's not much we can do with this. We can save these components of it. But uh, uh, I'm going to research, can I replace this line itself for a, a, a cost that doesn't mean you have to buy the whole unit. But this is why you inspect it. Because if you put this up and you didn't realize that this was frayed, and all of a sudden your life depended on going over the edge and it didn't hold your weight then it's no good it's not fall protection it's it's a guaranteed injury or death inspections are key guys so what do i do when i when i'm doing an inspection so here's a lanyard we'll start with this lanyard the number one thing is i want to look at is my label legible is this all intact this is what is the shock absorber in this particular lanyard. I'm going to look for fraying. Now this one still in, can be used, but it's getting towards the end of its lifespan because I'm seeing where it's, it's getting a little fuzzy. So where you see fuzzy, it's going to end up fraying. The other thing is an inspection tag. There should be an inspection tag on every piece of fall protection equipment. That I'm not seeing on this unit. So can I use this? Oh, there it is, right there. So inspection tags always need to be initialed and dated. This one you can see it was at one time. It's not very legible. So before it could be used, you'd want to, if you're a competent person, meaning you've been trained on fall protection equipment, you can initial that. And then your, your, uh, your inspection is good for one year. I suggest, though, every time it goes out to a job site, you re-inspect it and re-initial it. Harnesses. The first thing in harnesses, this is a brand new one, right out of the bag. So it's all purdy. Doesn't take them long to get dirty though. A couple things we're going to look for in inspections. Are there any frays? Are all of these belt loop things, are they all good or are they deformed? 
this is the f indicator that the thing has been used. If these red threads have been yanked apart, this ticket will kind of fall off and there's one on each side. Are those in place? Is this not bent, not deformed? Those are all key things. And when you when you come to work for us, they, they, you do a fall protection awareness video with a test. The other thing is on these is they also have that inspection tag. So you want to open this up. This is a brand new harness. And uh, what you'll want to do is go to inspection tag and see if it's been signed off on. As you can see, this is a brand new one out of the bag, so it hasn't been. Here again, as long as you're a competent person, you date it by month and year. So this is this is J July of 22, so we put 7-22 and then your initials. That completes the inspection of the unit, saying you have inspected it, and that's good. Here again, that's a brand new harness. We buy these fall techs, these are universal. They're not exactly the most comfortable, but they do the job. I've worn them. Uh, uh, we do not. In, we do not have a problem with you buying your own harness, as long as we get to look at it, inspect it, or initial it, and say you have your own harness. Some guys want to spend the four hundred dollars on a really nice harness. I don't blame you. Another thing that goes with harnesses are these suspension trauma straps. These hook on to your to your uh, harness. And in the event that you're hanging, you can drop these down, put your feet on it, and what it does is relieves the tension of the straps cutting off your arteries and your blood flow so that you don't build up blood clots. Um, we use these uh, depending on the job site. If you know that you can be rescued within five minutes, not a really big thing to have this on. If you're going to be hanging there for 10 minutes or longer possibly, got to have these. Otherwise, you're going to get trauma. Uh, where you get blood clots forming in your legs. You do not want that. Once those blood clots break free, they can kill you. We'll talk about the nano locks, the blue ones. These are the 11 foot leashes that we use. One key element to look at is, as you can see, there's some numbers, I hope. You can see the numbers and letters. Those are based off of this tag. We have a system of tracking this thing. So we do this in-house. Uh, we engrave these numbers in either at the shop or the safety team does it. It's based on this. This is how we track the equipment. It comes in, we buy it, we know when we bought it, we know the manufacturing date, and that way when they have to be re-inspected. Now you can see this one's freely working. It's brand new and it instantly catches. There's one that we had out in the field that's been used, and as you can see, no numbers have been engraved. We still have that tag on it. And the reason we're putting the numbers engraving on these, on all of our equipment, is these tags break off on the Guardians, the big serial number labels. They get scratched up. You can't read them. So by engraving the serial numbers or the portions of the serial numbers on these units, we can track them. We, we can track them to a job site. In some cases, some of our guys have these issued to each person, so they're responsible for that unit because they're moving from job to job. We have several different ways of tracking tools. And I think Jimmy will have more to come on that soon. But since this one hasn't been engraved, we'd want to get this engraved. So you would either contact one of the shops. On some of the larger job sites, we've brought engravers out and taken care of it on site. But that's something for uh, to talk to us about because we have a, a, a definite system of what we want to do when we're engraving those numbers and so they make sense. But there's nothing wrong with this unit. The one that was broken, you can actually see where it's been frayed, right here. We don't know why, but it was. The next thing is a lent is an extender. You know, sometimes that D ring on your harness is way up here. It's hard to do. This is legal as long as it's in good shape. Now I want you to look at this extender. It has to have the double latch. Now you see that double latch is kind of gummed up. Part of it is there's some taping mud there that we need to clean up. So this could be cleaned up. This has shows a little bit of surface rust. As long as that's cleaned up, it's good to go. Here again, this is the shock absorber portion. It's all in there. Everything looks good. It hasn't been used much. But that's what an extender is if you need one. So now let's talk about storage. Fall protection equipment does not just get thrown in a gang box. It has to be placed into a bin, it has to be hung up, 
somehow you have to take care of it so that we don't get a situation like where this was thrown in a gang box, something hot, maybe a chop saw, who knows, something hot was thrown in on top of this and it damaged it. Now if somebody hadn't inspected this, they went out and used it and it failed, that means they failed. And unfortunately it probably cost them, either with a bad injury or the worst case scenario, they aren't going home to their family ever again. And that's what we do not want. That does not just screw up that person's life, it screws up all of our lives. So inspection and storage are huge. So remember guys, if you need us to bring you out a bin to put stuff in in a gang box, we'll bring out you the bin and so you can put it in a gang box. If you need a set of hooks to hang stuff up in a job shack or in a connex, we're bringing out a thing with hooks to hang your harnesses up. Whatever you need, we'll make it available. But we can't be everywhere all the time. We need to know from you what you need for us to make you guys as proficient and as and as productive as possible. And the only way to do that is keeping lines of communication wide open, no secrets. If you go into our uh, fall protection rules, it's page 31 of every SSSP that's out there. And then the fall protection plan for every fall uh, job site, we've already gone over in a vi previous video, you need to be told or read through that and sign off on that. That's in the appendix. This here tells you what we're looking for, restraint versus arrest. We also need to make sure you guys are trained. And the only way to do that is go through accredited fall protection training. And we have set those classes up both at uh, APS offices and shops with the tapers training center and with the carpenters training centers. So there's no excuse for you guys not to get it. Actually, I can teach it too if need be, uh, but uh, sometimes my schedule is pretty booked on teaching other stuff. So just realize that if you ever, you have a right to know this stuff, guys. So if you ever want to read it, say, I want to read it, and we'll make sure you can. Training, though, we can have the best equipment in the world, and if you aren't trained, it's not going to do you a heck of a lot of good. So when is fall protection required? So how it is, we follow WISHA standards, which pretty much are some of the toughest in the country, right alongside uh, Army Corps of Engineers or DOD, Department of Defense, EM385-1. Um, 10 foot or above is we need to have fall protection on or fall restraint in place on anything that's 10 feet or above when we're on a low sloped roof or on a scaffold system. If it's a fully planked scaffold system, up to 10 feet, you do not have to have restraint or you do not need to be tied off. There's a caveat to that. Some of the GCs have stricter requirements. Some of the building owners have stricter requirements. We have to follow the strictest requirement, whether it's in the agency rules or not. We always have to go step up to that higher level. That's always addressed in your fall protection plan. Jeff and I make sure that we read through all the GC stuff to try to keep us all in compliance so we're always a step ahead and we aren't being called out. We want to look the part, we want to fit the part, we want to show everybody we are the best drywall company in the Pacific Northwest. The other places you need to have fall protection though is at four feet and above everywhere else. That's a Washington specific rule. If you look at OSHA in construction, they say six feet and above. In Oregon, they say six feet. Here at APS and in Washington, it's four feet and above. And what we have decided on is we're always going to stick to the strictest standard. The bulk of our work right now is in Washington State. They have the strictest standards on that four foot rule. And so we don't need you guys to think, am I in Oregon, am I in Washington? Now again, what was that rule? If we make it just a company rule at four feet or above, you have to have fall restraint or fall protection, then it becomes just a way of doing business. Always remember that anything between 18 inches and four feet has to be protected with guardrails or something. Um, if it's 18 inches or lower, it doesn't need to be. So that's another one of those weird little rules. Other than that, I would strongly encourage you guys to always reach out to us uh, with any questions, any concerns. When you run into situations you're not sure about how to address it, how to set it up, I do this all the time, Jeff has done this all the time, we'll go out to the job site, meet with the foreman, uh, even with the project managers if needed. We'll go over uh, how to rig stuff up 
And in the fall protection plan, we actually put all the directions on how all to use everything. We also have a folder that the foremen have capabilities of accessing that shows how you attach all this equipment. It's the user manual. So we have it digital, digitally, electronically, and we have it where we can print it off and bring it out to you. If you guys ever have any questions, contact Jeff or I. Uh, we're here as your servants to help you get this stuff done. We want you to get it done, do it correctly, be as productive as possible under every situation because without being productive, we aren't going to make money. But we can do it productively, we can do it safely, and we can shine. And that's our goals. So until next time, have a great, safe day, and we'll catch you on the next one.